Two birds, two bats, and of course my favorite group, crazy people. Hey listen, I'm going about to interview an 84-year-old expat that's been in Dumaguete for only seven or eight days. And I gotta tell you, boys and girls, if it could go wrong for old Orville here, it did. What you're gonna be endeared by, as I was, was how great his attitude is and how he it freely admits that he made some mistakes and what happened and what he's gonna do to correct it. He's given himself six months to check out the Philippines. And we've also got our special guest with us today, Goldfinger, who, as you might imagine, was part of the Orville's entire debacle. All right, so real quick, a quick shout out to all of you that have subscribed recently. I just want to welcome you to the old dog family. All right, hang in, and we're going to have my goofy little interview here with Orville and, yes, Goldfinger. Okay, so I am here with my friend Orville and my arch enemy Goldfinger. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and this is a fantastic little interview set up by Goldfinger with his buddy Orville. Yes. And now my friend oh. Orville. And I just found out you've been watching the channel for a couple of years, huh? Four years. Wow. You are a rock star. Thank you, brother. Yeah. So, Orville, I want to hear a little bit about you. Number one, where are you from? I'm from Lake Jackson, Texas, which is 50 miles south of Houston. Okay. And you're how old? How old are you? I'm 84 years old. 84 years old. God bless you. Yeah. And, um... How long have you been retired? I've been retired 29 years from Dow Chemical. And so what did you do in America for 29 years after you retired? Well, I went into business for a while. When I first retired, I bought a motor home and traveled around in the Southwest mostly. Okay. And the Northwest. Okay. And then after that, after about five years of that, I went into business down in the Valley of Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. I sold costume jewelry for about 14 or 15 years. So after you retired, you didn't really retire. I've you never been really retired. Understood. <laughs> and so now that you're 84, you decided to actually retire. I'm actually going to retire and try to live off of my income, which I have Social Security and a small pension from Dow Chemical. Understood. Well, that's awesome. Tell me something, why did you choose the Philippines? What's the main reason for you coming to the Philippines? From watching you and, and uh, uh, some of the other bloggers uh -huh. that are here in the in uh, Dimagetti. Uh -huh. And uh, I got interested in the place and I watched you for four years before I came. And well, let me apologize right now for wasting all your time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the cost of living is quite a bit lower here sure. than it is in the United States with all the inflation. Of course, there's inflation here also, but uh, it's not quite as bad as it is there. Right. I've been hearing that over and over and over again. I'm staying in this hotel right now, uh -huh. the Go Hotel. Uh -huh. It's fairly nice. And uh, I'm staying here for a rep, just a little over $300 a month. Nice. In fact, I'm going to feature this hotel in an upcoming video, oh, good. but that's neither here nor there right now. So, you are, um, you're here for economic reasons. Anything else? Well, I'm also a devout Catholic and it appealed to me that this was a Catholic country. Uh -huh. And I like taking pictures and posting them on uh, Facebook okay. for my friends and family of beautiful churches. So well, that's one of the things that I'm going to do while I'm here. I think that's fantastic. You know, the first two and a half years that I lived here, I did the same thing. I wasn't on churches, but I would do Facebook photos and videos for my friends and family back home. When I was leaving, they were trying not to get me to go, but I promised them that I would be sending them lots of beautiful pictures, and they okayed my going because of that. That's awesome. So what's your, you got a, a game plan too that I agree with. 
What's your game plan? How long are you going to be in the Philippines? My game plan is to stay this time six months uh -huh. before I make up my mind about whether I want to stay or not. Okay. And if I really like it after six months, then I'll go home, sell my car, and come back and stay longer. Orville, I've got a big compliment for you, and I've got a big thank you for you. Not only have you watched my channel for four years, but you're the absolutely positively first person that actually listened to anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe May listened to everything you said. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> but no, really, I think that that is so smart. Goldfinger, let's get you to chime in. We're, we talk about slowing down. Yeah. And we felt, uh, you felt, you called me up and told me about Orville. And the one thing that I think Orville may have had a little misfire with was the slowing down part. Right. Okay, so he's going to give it six months, and I think that's great. But you're of the impression, in fact, you have living proof that you think Orville moved a little too quickly. I Can met, you elaborate? I met Orville at Ground Zero and I, I instantly liked him. He's, he's really a nice guy, okay? And, uh, but he was, in a, he was in a rush for everything. He wanted an apartment or a house. Uh -huh. and, and I put him in touch with somebody uh, and, and, and then he, he wanted a bike because he said he used to ride at 650. And uh, I said, well, let's get you a small little thing. And he wanted something, he didn't want a small little thing, you know, he wanted something decent. I said, okay. And, it, and then I, I, I put him in touch with that, and he wanted a bike to ride, and then he also uh, wanted a girl. I said, you got to slow your roll there, guy. <laughs> he, he, has, he has eyes for several girls already at Ground Zero. He, okay, I don't blame him, they're very yeah. pretty. I don't think we ever grow old. No. Uh, when it comes to females, okay. No. You know when we're when in our sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, um, even though we look like you know death warmed over, we in our brains we yourself. still we still think that we're nineteen years old. Uh, you know, your mind. Your you mind, agree, Orville? I, I mean, agree. I, I mean, agree. nothing's brain. changed when it comes to women. I mean, a pretty woman is a pretty woman. Yeah, a short is skirt is a short skirt. When walks by, you're going to look. I don't care how old you are. All right. All right. So my brain stopped brain-wise at 30 years old. Uh -huh. I, I haven't gained a year after 30 <laughs> in my mind. Right. Okay, right. And we won't talk about the rest of it. <laughs> well, you're lucky mine stopped at 13. At 13. Oh, God, no. So, All right. So, so you got... You got um, Orville felt that he was okay. You felt you were okay to drive a bike. I did because I'd been driving one before, even though I had sworn off because I had a pretty traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. I was I had driven it to Walmart one night, my 650 Suzuki, and I was coming back and some guy jumped out and spread eagle in front of me. And when he did, I swerved around him and I come back in too close and I had those aluminum wheels on the scooter and they grabbed that curb. And then I went in over in. Wow. And uh, I come to a little while later with some paramedics there waking me up. I, so I said, no more two wheels. Okay. And I get over here and everybody's on two wheels. And right. everybody's going slow. Right. Nobody's going fast. And I think, well, I could probably do it all right. But I don't think I'm as strong as I used to be. Yeah. And yeah. So that 650 was probably too big for me. I mean the Honda that. And what 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 size bike did you? He ended up finding a, uh, a Honda uh, PCX 160. Okay. Water cooled. And you recommended a 125. I said 125, and he said no, he can handle it. So it, it we went to a cafe, sat down, and it was brought over. And I'm worried about him, so like he, I said, well, you better test drive it. So he test drove it, and he seemed okay on it, actually. He, he made a U-turn, he went up the street, went back, down the street, came back, and uh, he seemed like he'd be okay, and he wanted to follow a realtor that he had already contacted. Okay. Okay, and he was going to follow her on the bike to go see places, okay? Okay. And so uh, 
I figured, okay, now, I, I actually saw him three days at this cafe. So the first day, you got the bike. The second day, he goes and looks at, at uh, apartments, and he laid the bike down, he tells me, twice. Okay. Uh, and I, but but it was he didn't get hurt. Okay. He, and he says it was just kind of you, you swung wide, right? You just swung a little mm -hmm. wide. Okay. And he actually just put it down, but it was too heavy for him to pick it up, and too heavy for the um, it was um, a girl that works for uh, Al. Is it okay to say the name? Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a it's a girl named Angel. That yeah, sorry, noise. Angel that works for uh, Alba Folco, okay? Okay. And, and I always recommend her, okay? So I put him in touch with her. I actually know her. I put him in touch with her. And uh, then what we did, uh, he, he, he's following Angel, but he was, only in, he was only interested in the fact that he wanted to date Angel, who's in her young 20s. And he's 84. He wants his young, he's going to run after this young 20 girl. But he couldn't forget. He didn't care about putting the bike down. All he talked about was Angel. Uh, yeah, right? You did. I don't know if you realized it. You liked Angel, did you? Well, yeah, she was a nice kid. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to oh, the I'm bike sorry. now. So we've had two motorcycle accidents. Well, I told him. I told and didn't we have three? Well, so we had two laid down. And I said, let's get a smaller bike. Okay? And, and no, he wanted the bike he had. He said, he's fine. He's, just, he's ready to go. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, he had a couple of the problems we'll talk about. But on the third day, he crashed. When uh, he had apartments. Right here. Right here in the parking lot. I mean, right here in the parking lot. I never got out of the parking lot. You never made it out of the Go Hotel. He really crashed bad. And how did you crash? Did you hit someone or did... No. So, uh, someone hit you? or I hit the curb. Oh, you coming out, you hit the curb, and you put yeah. it down. I backed it out. It was hard to back out because this rock, it's gravel. a rock gravel yeah. parking spot. So I backed it out. I'm ready to go. And I gave it too much gas, and I lost control of it. And I saw I was going to crash. So I started shut, shutting it down, and then I just fell over on the curb. And he, and he thought he was slowing down, but he actually throttled up. Yeah. Throttled okay. Up. That's I remember you telling me. And did he get hurt real bad? Real bad. No, not real bad. Now let's oh. take a look here. So he's telling me. Actually, you know what? You didn't break any bones. No, no. bones broken. Uh, it looks to me like I've had I've had worse. Myself, well, he, uh, not that we're competing, <laughs> but you're healing your very elbow, fast. Your elbow got hurt too, right? No. You had some strike. It's all, all gone. All right. All right. So let me ask you this question. If we had dialed it back to a 125, do either one of you have an opinion? Would that maybe have been a smarter choice? It would have been a better choice for him. It would have been a better choice. Okay. Because it would be lighter? It's yeah. much lighter. It, much lighter. And I have to confess that my wife has got a 110, yeah, little Honda Beat. Yeah. I have a 150 ADV, and I used to have a, a Kimco that was real heavy, bottom heavy. When I got rid of the Kimco, life got good. I bought my wife the 110 before I bought my ADV, and I loved driving the 110. Really? Because the, the bottom line is I just want to get from point A to point B. And I don't have to look cool doing it. I don't have to have a fancy schmancy thing. I think a lot of guys, their egos get a hell of them. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Let's well, see, you're light. And well, I'm smaller okay. anyway. Yeah. And he's small. When I see you know? him, he's small. And if I you are like a that, bigger boy. You need a bigger bike. There's no shocks. There's no, no way. There's right. no springs, in fact. No. And it, I bottom out, and you hit every bump. No, no. And, and, you, and when you're first riding here, and this is my first experience in riding a bike here, is you see up ahead, you see, the roads are not perfect here. They have, uh -huh. uh, you know, missing patches. And I'm going, okay, left. No, right. I should go left. I go right. Go left. <laughs> yeah. You go right over it. And then they see you know you're you're about to crash. Okay. okay. And, and you need a bike that can handle that. So if sure. you go right over a, a hole now with the 160, you don't even notice it. Okay. So let's let's get into the the meat of the matter here, which I think is. Um, the one thing that I've always preached over and over and over again that no one seems to listen to, and I understand why, is I tell people to slow down. Right. And well, when I say slow down, 
I mean, to get in, get settled down, check in for 30 days at a hotel, which Orville is doing. Now. And yeah. now, yeah. okay, now he is. Um, the rush to get in, if you've got six month window, I mean, the first Even if you have three week, months. two yeah. weeks, I think, should be just letting your body get readjusted to the time zone, get used to where some food is, uh, take some public transportation, possibly check out rental bikes, it depends on, on you, and, and see how it goes, rent one for a day or two, see if it works, see if it doesn't. The key element, I think, is just not trying to get it all done in one week. And I get it, because when I came over here, I was the exact freaking same way. I wanted to. So was I. I wanted to find a place right yeah, away. Right. I want, and I've said it before. If I had it to do all over again, I would have checked into a friggin' hotel for a month, and I would have just chilled out and and gotten the lay of the land. You gotta slow your roll. You gotta slow your now roll. Now you should rent. You shouldn't buy. He bought yes. the bike. Yeah, he bought the bike. Another problem. So now we got another issue with well, that. Well, the bike is highly damaged. Yeah. Uh, like a lot. Yeah. Uh, it has some. You know, when I rode it, I rode it to the to repair shop, and I felt a little bit of a shimmy, and I thought, well, it's just out of balance. No, they don't balance the wheels here like they do in the States. They replace them. And he, he, he messed up the whole fairing. The step is cracked. Uh, so there's some, uh, you know, brackets that need to be replaced. And the headlight doesn't work anymore. Okay, well. I don't know why. The headlight's got a crack in it, but it's just a small crack. It don't work. Those are just the consequences, again, I think. But uh, the spare parts here are astronomical. And they take six months. Honda does not stock parts. Right. So when you order everything to replace parts, you know, like you might need, you got a long wait. Uh, and it's, it's very expensive. Uh, they, they don't have like a fe a body shops here uh, that do a decent job. Uh, I found one and I was afraid to leave the bike there. Uh, it looked pretty bad. Mm. There was a lot of unfinished and messy floor, messy cars. And a lot of well, there's a point where you should slow down yeah. because this is a chance now for you to stop, ask a few people, talk to a few guys, check with guys like me or this guy or that guy that's been here for a long time and say, hey, where would I go? Who do I see? Who do I talk to? Yeah, there's, there's no I think hurry. There is no hurry. No. And you know what's so important over here, and you've already begun by meeting Goldfinger, is an influential, positive circle of influence of men that are your friends, like Goldfinger, who's gone out of his way to help you. Just out of the kindness of his heart. He's, been a he's never he's a good friend. Yeah. He's, yeah. Good no, friend. Goldie, I know him. He has never ever wanted to do anything but help. And speaking of help, um, we're gonna plug your ebook right now. Right. Okay. So the ebook, the purpose of the ebook. This is your twentieth revision. The yes. reason I know is because you sent me nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> that. You made me read. Well, this is going to be a okay. 21 pretty soon. And finally, I think to be honest with you, Goldfinger, I gave up on about 14. Well, and so when you sent me, when I, you sent me the 20, hold on a yeah. second, there, Chief. It's an ebook for beginners, for dummies, for yeah. first-time expats. It's, it's called Do Again. And on the screen know. here somewhere, uh, at some point in this conversation, I'll get made to type in your email. Okay. And people can email you for a free copy right. of your email. And what's it called and what does it contain? It's Dumaghetti for Dummies. Okay. Okay. It has everything in there. It talks about everything that Orville did wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a good sport Orville is. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny because he can laugh at himself. He's pretty yeah. cool. So, he's going to fit in here he's well. Fit in play. Yeah. It talks about, of course, the Bureau of Immigration, your visas, your SSRs, your RV long term, your short term. It talks about how to get discounts on flights, uh, airlines, how to book a hotel, what hotels are best, restaurants, uh, you know, how, transportation here. 
it, it, it even goes in the end about the ladies, okay? Okay. And, and, and that, that was the hardest one to put in there because, you know, you, I have to be fair to everybody. Sure. Okay? To, to the Filipinas and to the Americans. And, and so that's, that's in there, too, about how, how to find how to uh, find a girl, where to find All right. Her. Well, that's very it's useful mostly information. mostly about Dumaguete, but it could be applied to any city. I agree. Philippines. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, good. Well, the you restaurants... You should call that the Philippines for dummies. Philippines for dummies? Well, I, I, I live in Dubaguete, so I call it in a friend Ryan. Plus, so. you're talking about restaurants here and all that uh, yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, so. and hotels here. So it's but a, the general j consensus is is that if somebody has a, 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 an idea about how, how to do a throwaway ticket or how to how to yeah, uh, you know, all that. How, where's how to do immigration, how long is my yeah, visa good for... Right. Those are the questions you and me get bombarded with oh, all yeah. the time. Orville, we're going to wrap this up with you, kid. What's your game plan from here on forward? You've, got, you've only been here eight days, for crying out loud. So slow down. you got six months, and you're going to slow, slow down. down. Yeah. All right, so you're going to take public transportation, and you're going to... I'm just going to say that you're going to probably continue... Your next quest will still be the apartments. Um, That's and true, but it, I'm going to make sure it's Dumaguete proper so that I can still do public transportation. That is a very good point. And I want to just emphasize this. The guys that I feel uh, the most empathy for, I guess is the best word, is those that rely on public transportation here. Right. Because there is a, a, a loss of some freedom that you have of, I want to go now, you hop on the bike, you hop in the car, boom, away you go. We're here, you need to wave it down, it's slow, it's cumbersome, there's communication issues sometimes with the trike drivers. So I know guys that do it. Uh, the good news is once you get past that critical stage where you say, okay, I have this house or I have this apartment. It's in my budget. I like it. I want to live here. Right. Groovy. We're good. All right. You can now make a relationship with trike drivers, Hubble, Hubble drivers, neighbors. Again, our circle of influence right. of friends that if you want to go to church on Sunday, you say you're a devout Catholic. I'm sure there's all kinds of people that would be more than willing to pick you up, take you with them, go to lunch, or you just, in your cell phone, you have the, the phone number or the text of five different trike drivers, yeah. five different you guys. Can get, when you find a pedicab that you really like, he's a safe driver and he's a nice pedicab, and you're not bouncing all over the place, you get his phone number. Uh-huh. And you get him on call. Uh-huh. And that's the best way. It, it might cost you a little bit more, but now you always know he's responsible, blah, blah, blah. And his bike's, bike's good, pedicab's good. Uh, so I always tell everybody, get the pedicabs. It's in the ebook. Get the pedicab's phone number, okay? Right. Is that what you call the guy on the tracks, pedicab? Pedicab. Yeah, it's a different bike. name. Pedicab. And I think another thing is I've always had a difficult time, not always, but more often than not, communicating with the trike drivers. Um, I think that that would be one of my, my prerequisites is find a guy that could, we can communicate right. with. Some guys, you hop in the, in the trike and you go, how you doing? They're like, cool, how are you doing? And another guy, you say, how you doing? And you get the blank stare. Yeah. So yeah, you want to there's speak, you want the, to speak English. You need to speak some English. Yeah. You want to be able to communicate. And the thing is, like if you go to Why Not in the evening, and they, or you go to a restaurant in the evening, if you live in Valencia, that's going to be very difficult. Okay? Right. Uh, but if you live in Dumaguete and you want to go to Why Not in the evening, some drivers, after, say, 7, 8 o'clock, if it's going to be after 7, 8 o'clock, they're going to want four times the price uh, to take you up the same distance. Sure. Uh, because they feel like they're working after hours. But if you have a guy on call, you won't expect that. They're also doing trikes on Grab, but I haven't experimented with that yet. So yeah, you have a guy that you're loyal to and he's loyal to you. You pay him a little bit extra, right. maybe give him a bonus at the end of every week or whatever. 
uh, pick him up, buy something good. for his family, give him a little gift, show a token of appreciation, then you're going to be fine. And you make a very good point, Goldfinger. To live out where I live would be impossible. It would be very and difficult. They need ride to out be, there during the day, yeah. but it's three, four, five hundred 500 pesos oh, one yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. And then when you want to go home, you don't let the guy go. You, yeah. you stay with the guy if you can or you have him stay there and, and just pay him for a whole day. Yeah. So typically, the best way to do it if you're going to go up to Valencia is give the guy 2,000 pesos and say you're my driver for the day. All right. Yeah. Well, Orville, you know what? i got to commend you. You're 84 years old. You're still chasing skirts. You're still looking for apartments. You're still, you're still ready to retire now. You're done with the work business. You're, and what is your, what is your, let's end this on this. What is your, what is your hope that in six months? You're gonna go home, sell your car, come back. Do you hope that it works out here in Philippines? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that it will, or is it too still I too think soon? I it probably will. Yeah. Okay. For, for it him. may not be Dumaguete. Okay. Be, I, I intend to look around a little bit. Right. Well, you know what? My friend Chad Good. Foster made friends with a gentleman your age, and he found that Cebu was a much better fit for that because there are areas there where there's like self-contained cities where you live in a condo, the rent's a little higher, but you come downstairs and you don't even need a pedicab. You can get your coffee, you can sure. get your breakfast, you can go... Everything you, is walking distance. There's taxis, there's grab, you can get to the mall, and the ladies are a lot more plentiful in Cebu than yeah. they are here. So that might be something we'll follow up with you on. I need to and, get one more story about something that happened. And only in the Philippines with this with this uh, happen. He lost Orville on the second day. Oh, that's right. He lost his iPhone. Uh -huh. iPhone 15. You cannot get an iPhone 15 here. Okay? They're expensive and they're not available. That happened the first time I laid it down. I lost my phone. When you laid down the phone. Fell out of your pocket. So I said to him when I saw him, he was very upset about losing the iPhone, naturally. Naturally. Because all his contacts are in there and everything else. And he had the USA phone number in there. So what I, I said to him, have you tried calling him? Well, he had the ringer off, and he had the vibration off, and because he has a hearing aid, and it rings to his hearing aid. But the thing is, on an iPhone, you, you, it's facial recognition. You can't dial out, so they can't find the phone numbers or any of the information in it. But they can answer the phone if someone calls it. So I started calling the phone a bunch, and, and a lady answered, okay? And I told them, only in the Philippines, they'll return the phone here. They won't keep it and sell it like they would in the States, I'll be honest. So I said, let's see if we can find somebody. Maybe somebody found it. Maybe somebody picked it up. Maybe they're waiting. And they didn't respond on the first few calls. But about an hour later, they responded. They came over to where we were having coffee on a trike. And it was a very nice lady. And uh, and returned his phone. He was happy as a kid. In a wow, candy that's store. a great story. Here's that. Another thing about it, the lady that found it, her son's the one that found it, but she's the one that's making sure it gets returned. She calls my daughter in the United States. Wow. My daughter tells me that my phone has been found, and so I'm communicating with her by text because I have my iPad with me. Uh -huh. And she says, the lady is going to be there in 30 minutes. Well, doesn't that just sum up the Philippines? And, you know, that's just the Philippines. They don't, they don't think about that. They're so helpful, especially if you're older. They'll help you upstairs. They'll open doors for you. If they see you have a cane or you're a little bit older, you go in front of everybody. They'll take you out of line and put you in front. In fact, at restaurants and banks, they have a separate person for anybody that's either handicapped, pregnant, or elderly. That's correct. And it's, it's phenomenal. It's great. Well, I'll tell you what, Orville, I'll make you a deal, buddy. We're going to check back with you in about three months. I want you to come back on the old dog channel, and you can bring uh, what's-his-name over here with you. Hopefully you leave him at home, but <laughs> we'll get a follow-up on you well, my and question find out. Is yes, sir. And then could you take up a collection for me? <laughs> 
That's me for the ebook. It has all the information in there. It'll save you a lot of money. Well, get we're gonna it's we're gonna free. we're gonna not only put that on the screen somewhere, but we will also put a link in the description. I, mean, I don't sell And I'll I've try to highlight a comment. Yeah. But it's it's free. It's it's what you want to do. It's your contribution yeah. to the Philippines. Because a lot and of people ask me questions, and I put all. And every time a new question comes up, that's how you get a, a, another version. Okay, good. I, go, I didn't think about. And that. how many I of those say, have you given away so far? Uh, hundreds. Hundreds. I haven't counted hundreds. And we haven't promoted it at all. Uh, not much. All right. Well, they're blowing whistles and making noises, so we're going to end it. Thank you, Orville, so much Thank for being Paul. on the channel. Hi, very Goldfinger, nice. Goldfinger, as always. Rock on, Daddy-O. Later. Later. Thank you, Goldfinger.